Hello everyone. So I'm on here to make an announcement. Some of you know I went live on Instagram today to tell you that I would have big news. And this is truly like a marking day in my career. And I can hardly contain my excitement, even though I might seem to be really chill. Um, I'm going to tell you guys what happened today and, and, and <laughs> the story and how everything was concocted in such a beautiful, divine, orchestrated way. And I, 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 I am so looking forward to this. So so here's the thing. We have a a smart body. We have a light body, all right? And this light body is our intuitive knowing. It is our it speaks to us the more that we speak to it. Like it's like that in the universe too. You know, it's kind of like if you don't put your energy into something, you're not probably not going to get a response because you're tuned into a different radio station. But when we start to awaken and we start to commune with our guides, with our light body, with our body, really, it's it's both. It's the light body, but it's also your, your physical body. Um, it starts to signal you as to what you should eat or shouldn't eat or what you should do or shouldn't do or if you should turn left or right. Um, and so this light body is an intelligence, if you will. It's your, your, your Merkaba. It's the structure, the crystalline structure that surrounds you. So the last few months, I've reduced my personal readings, all right? I was doing readings for four years. I was taking about eight, nine calls a day and definitely was on the cusp of experiencing a burnout. And then my guides said, we need to pull you out. You know, we need to abort the mission because uh, you're going to drive yourself to the ground and we have something in store for you, something that you need to pr prepare for. And we need you to get back into your meditative space because I'm an avid meditator and I meditate two, three hours a day. And I'm in that space, even when I'm not meditating Anywho, So they said, we need to pull you out of this ASAP because otherwise, if you don't conserve your energy, you're going to have nothing left to give in the future. And I started connecting the dots that there were many timelines that were about to converge um, one in particular, but there are many, you guys know it's an infinite quantum universe, but there, there's this timeline that I saw with my inner sight and mm, it, it, I started reducing the amount of readings I would do a day. Also, as you guys know, we, we started doing a lot of group events and group webinars and my focus changed as well. You know, I was able to pour more of my energy into reaching a wider audience in a, in a shorter amount of time. And it was beneficial for for both accounts. For me, it's, it's beneficial in that it's more money, yet I get to charge much less than a reading. Anyways, it's a win-win for everyone, right? And, and my goal is to get this, this cosmic information widespread as much as I can. So anyways, I listen to my light body. It's very important that we do, you guys, because a lot of people are always doing, 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 rather than being, being, being. And when we do, 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 then we're actually not Mm, I guess you can say connecting into or or connecting ourselves into it's like a light socket and you need to plug yourself back into source back into source matrix back into God back into your higher self back into your oversoul you need to plug back into that in order to start receiving that internal and higher guidance so I listened to that and and I, I decreased the amount of readings I did per day and However, I, I, I'm always working, you know, I'm always meditating or, or doing something to further myself along the path. Most of the time it has to do with reading light codes by being in a meditative space and then taking breaks and then going for a walk and doing it again or going to do exercise. Everything that lends to uh, becoming a more pronounced consciousness structure, right? Which can be physical activity, which can be spending time with your friends and blowing off some steam sometimes. Um, it's all dependent upon what your body is asking for in that moment um, because it's all about living in this newly formed vibrational existence, which from the overview isn't new because it's always been here. It's just that we were cut off from it. Um, and that was part of the mission is to to descend in order to then reascend through the golden spiral, through the through the um, or to climb that that rainbow stairway, you know, so. And, and return to source and return to our higher selves and merge with it as it through it and with it you know it's it's so many things so what's funny is that a lot of my friends were wanting to plan things like hey you know you're not working as much why don't we do this why don't we go for a hike why don't we go for dinner and and i i started this as an experiment about two years ago 
where I decided that I wouldn't organize things anymore, you know, <laughs> and I, to the best of my ability, I did succeed in doing that where I would just open readings the night before on Instagram and things like that. You know, obviously you still need to, to be organizational in some respect. So I did that. But in terms of my personal life, not my business life. I reduced all of my activities, you know, with friends, social activities, uh, going out for hikes, and really, really being present with myself. Now, I started this as an experiment, and it became very eye-opening, or I should say third eye-opening, to see how many people are addicted to different timelines, you know, and, and, and unconsciously so. And it's not their fault, you know, it's, it's, it's how we've been programmed, is we need to have something to look forward to or something to look back on in order to keep carrying those old narratives, in order to keep carrying those old energies that are rather dense in nature um, from our past as well. And we do this so much. And it, does time exist? Yes, it does. Time exists from a third dimensional vantage point. It really does. Um, but from a fifth dimensional and beyond standpoint, time is an illusion. And the construct of time is rooted in separation. I mean, think about it. And this is this is a massive download I got over the years is if you look at the past and the present and the future, that in itself is segmented. That in itself is, is separation. So, so past, present, future, if you're trying to manifest something outside of you, it would mean that you're, you're perceiving the future as being outside of you. It, that's something that you have to reach for, right? Which from a linear uh, viewpoint that is true you know there is a future there is something that's going to happen tonight there's something that's going to happen tomorrow there's something that happened yesterday which is why i'm on here today so time doesn't does exist so we don't want to um neglect that or or, or discredit that it, it's truly i mean the path of embodiment the path of to enlightenment and rather than of enlightenment to enlightenment the path to enlightenment is really about encompassing all the perspectives it's about acknowledging that you know if you're living in the clouds with rainbows and unicorns that's amazing that's all good but it's also important to be anchored in our physicality and lock your doors when you leave your house because there are still there are still people out there who will come in and rob you right and some people might argue and say well no it, that that would only happen if you still hold that frequency of fear and then you would magnetize that to you I get that. I mean, I know all of that stuff. However, to me, the the most important attribute of this awakening journey of this ascension process is to be anchored in all that you are, you know, and taking the overview, but also keeping in mind that we're still in a third dimensional reality. Like if you have kids someday, and I don't have kids, but if you have children, you can say to them, you know, if uh, if a stranger drives up to you in a car and wants to you to hop in, don't do it. You know, not everyone is still oneness and love and, and unity. So we have to look at every perspective when we're dealing with our path to enlightenment. I like that path to enlightenment rather than of enlightenment. So, um, all right, getting back to my experiment, this is probably going to be a long video, so you may want to grab some popcorn. <laughs> so... <laughs> or kombucha or something so um okay back to where i was it was very 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 eye-opening to witness how many people are addicted to time and as you guys know, you know, you can awaken. I had a spontaneous Kundalini awakening and it's a very active awakening to this day um, in 2011. But there are awakenings within awakenings. It's a, it's a constant journey. We're ever shifting. So it became an awakening in and of itself to stop planning things with people. And I would get messages like almost every day like, hey, we should do something this weekend. We should do it. And I was like, wow. And the downloads were flooding in as to how hooked people are on this next event and this next event or this past event when really I live as a dot. And you guys know that's like my mantra in life is be a dot. Be a dot. Get, exit this construct of time while still honoring that you are human. And if you have to pick up your kids from school at 4 p.m., you will be there, right? It's about being well-rounded. It's about being well-balanced. So, 
Um, okay. So it became very eye-opening. And at first I thought, okay, I'm only going to do this a month. But it's become my way of life where it's a vibrational, it's an energetic existence. And I truly just follow that internal tick, like tick. It's a metronome, and I was in music for most of my life. I was an R&B singer, and I really relate to everything that's musical, everything that is um, rhythmic, everything that's melodic or symphonic. So is that how you say it, symphonic? Anyways, that is like a symphony. So it's like a beat. It's an internal drum that you follow. And that's how I choose to live my life now. And it's been so invigorating and so revitalizing because... When you plan things with people, and this is just one of infinite perspectives, you guys know, like if you plan, there's nothing wrong with it, enjoy it, it's part of your experience here, and you might be wired or your genetic makeup may be such that this is how you want to experience your reality, and maybe you want to plan, and in between your plans, you want to sink into that meditative space, like it's all good either way. But what I have found, it's been like my spiritual research, is that subconsciously, when people, or unconsciously, when people are, I'm gonna turn this brightness on though, otherwise my laptop's probably gonna run out of battery. So when people know that they're gonna see you next week, um, they will, you guys are intertwining your field. So there's almost like a quantum entanglement, if you will. And you might be receiving energy or they may be receiving energy, but you don't know where that energy is coming from. Now, from one angle, you could say that it's love and they're just being energized through the frequency of love that is connecting the both of you. Um, so that, that, that would be a valid perspective. Or you can look at it also as like, we constantly need, need something outside of us to keep us afloat in this reality. We constantly need things that are outside of us to keep us afloat. And we're not even aware of this. We're not even cognizant of this fact that we're constantly entwining ourselves with other people, creating these entanglements that then energize us at a subconscious level. So for me, I want to pull from source. Now, I'm not saying that I may not pull from someone else, um, that even if I'm not linked to them, it's kind of like saying like, you know, you can try to drink distilled water your entire life and avoid fluoride, you know, to avoid de uh, calcifying your pineal gland, or to decalcify your pineal gland, you can do that your whole life, but when you get in the shower, there might be some trace of fluoride, or when you go out to the restaurant, there might be some fluoride in your soup. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, there are certain things within this 3D construct that are inevitable, right? And unavoidable, I should say. So, um, yes, it became a very, very eye-opening experiment. Now, after reducing the amount of readings I was doing per day, I found that I couldn't hang out with people because in many ways it felt like I was in a pressure cooker, even though it didn't feel like I was stressed or anything. I felt like I was in a pressure cooker and I was prepping myself for a timeline. It's almost like how I can perceive it. And even though we are quantum beings and we're not indebted to a timeline or we don't have to report to a timeline, uh, there are certain things that are meant to happen, that are part of your soul mission here or a galactic role on earth that are just meant to happen. And there's a timing for things. Just like I believe my Kundalini awakening, even though I was dead asleep, I was like literally like a zombie, but I had a lot of passion because I was so angry about life and I wanted to find purpose. But my Kundalini awakening, I didn't even know what the Kundalini was. But So it just goes to show that when it's time for that spiritual light switch to turn on, that spiritual light switch turns on, <laughs> okay? So for me, being with myself every day and meditating and going to my favorite coffee shop and getting a latte and just working with my third eye pretty intensively and going on walks to take a break and connecting with nature and sitting by a tree or hugging a tree, I feel like I've been in an intensive summer class where we have to pack it all in because this timeline is arriving. And I had an idea of what the timeline was, but I wasn't certain. And so it started unraveling in the sense that people started reaching out to me to do podcasts. Okay. Um, one was sponsored by Gaia, Shaman Jurek. All these things started happening and I started connecting all the dots. Like, ah, that's what I was preparing for. You know, I was working on my throat chakra and making sure that I speak 
articulately and so on. And I was working on pacing myself when I speak, even though I've got a lot of training from doing over 5,000 readings. Uh, <laughs> um, I've got a lot of training around that. But that was even part of it, of this whole thing. And there's more to be, to be, to be had, to be continued, right? I'm just sharing it from this now moment. So I didn't really understand why I had to reduce sessions. I just knew I had to. And I knew that I was preparing for a timeline that was now converging into my reality. So then these podcasts starting, started popping out of the ground. And I'm like, sure, I'll do it, you know. Um, and I got, I broke the ice there. And I've done three so far. And, and then um, the last few days. So here, here I'm going to get to the story now, right? So the last few days. Okay, so the last few days. I've been missing taking readings. And I took a couple maybe three days ago, but nothing crazy. And I've been missing taking readings, but something my guides kept telling me, you need to wait. Just wait a few more days. Just wait. Let us wrap this up, all right, and put a bow. Like, let's wrap this up and, and have a cute little bow at the end of this. And, and we don't want you to prematurely start the readings again because we need you to be fully present with this download. This is the other thing I want to share with you all. When you listen to your light body, when you connect into that vibrational space and you follow that internal tick, that internal rhythm, that internal spiritual tempo, when you follow that, you accelerate your manifestation process. And I'll tell you why. Because you're no longer externally focused. You're internally focused. And when you're internally focused and you're solely focused on your higher self and this new, you could say this new earth existence or this this um, complying with this this higher plasmic crystalline grid, which is the heartbeat of our new existence here that, that's being anchored in at this time, that's already been anchored from a higher dimensional viewpoint. But when you follow that internal ping or that internal drum, you collapse realities or timelines that don't, um, that you don't need in your life a lot faster. So whenever you collapse a timeline, you merge yourself into a new one. Or another way to look at it. This is how I kind of view it all the time. So say that you have two timelines, okay? And this is an aspect of yourself on one timeline. And then you have this other aspect over here. And this, you would probably liken this to your future. And this would be likened to where you stand now. I'm just giving you guys an example. When you are fully present with your spirit, you cut this. It's almost like you cut a thread between the two. This one drops. Doop, doop. And there's a unification that takes place. Okay, so I'll give you another example. There was a time in my life where I was overly obsessed with working out to the point where it wasn't healthy. You know, to the external world, working out is super healthy. What are you talking about? You, you look great. No, everything is about balance in life. And there's a delicate balance to everything. So I knew that I was overly doing it. And I was, in a way, abusing my body. And... So I would, I, I, this was years ago, all right, when I first started awakening, I would sit in meditation rather than acting on the impulse of going to the gym, which the ego loves to do. Come on, we need to go or else you're going to get fat or else you're going to look a certain way or your face is going to get inflamed or blow up. And I would sit in meditation for hours and connect to that future version of myself that I am now. And I would, <laughs> I call it breathing in his oxygen. So there was another piece of myself that was on another timeline that was already already traveling the world that didn't mind if a gym wasn't accessible or available. And I would connect to his energy because I knew that if that timeline had happened now, I would be screwed because I would panic if I was in Bali or if I was in London or anywhere without a gym. So there's a timing to everything, okay? There's a timing to everything. So Instead, I started converging both of those time, uh, sorry, sorry, merging both of those timelines and collapsing the old one. So I would connect with my higher self or my future self, Phil, who is Phil 2.0, if you will, who's traveling the world and is taking his work with him and isn't worried about whether there's a gym. Of course, he would stay fit, but wouldn't need to obsess about if there's going to be weights or a gym. And I would connect with his energy, his essence, and I would breathe in his oxygen. And as I would do this, I would, I could feel him, his essence integrating into mine, integrating into my theory DNA, my physical DNA. And, and you could feel like instantaneous healing or reparation of sorts or um, 
the the right word I, I I would say it was a soothing energy that spiraled down my DNA and and would blend or merge both of those timelines and this did not happen overnight you know this was very much of a gradual process um, it could have probably happened sooner if I was you know adamant about not going to the gym every day but obviously I wanted to maintain the balance because it's all about balance you know it's all about balance so I, I, I consciously chose to draw out the process if you will but to still be extra mindful and extra intentional on days where I didn't go to the gym. And I find that that helps a lot for those of you who are watching right now. If you're struggling with something and you want to better yourself, you want to, you know, you want to clear that program or you want to clear that Akashic imprint or that karmic debt or whatever it is, this, this thing that keeps you anchored in the lower timeline. If you sit on days where you don't go to the gym or on days where you um, say that you don't like to eat donuts. Well, when you allow yourself, you give yourself a permission slip to eat a donut, rather than like trying to dispel of that energy afterward and blaming yourself and guilting yourself, say, you know what, let me infuse this donut with love. Let me bring that aspect of love back into myself that I'm beautiful, whether I eat a donut or not, or whether I look this way or that way. And I find that that I used to ask my angels, angels, I ask that you shroud me in your love, in your light as I take this day off. And I'm going to be very intentional about paying attention to the subtleties that come up for me that day. Because here's the thing, and this is a bit of a sidebar. When you shift your patterning, you're essentially switching yourself into a different matrix of thoughts that are not as familiar to you. You know, like on a day off from the gym, I'm not really used to not going to the gym. So I'm going to start receiving different information from other channels, other radio channels within the collective, um, other thoughts, maybe thoughts that I might get fat, you know, people who, who have negative thoughts. I also get the very loving thoughts, like you're beautiful as you are. And so you, you promote this beautiful meld, okay, between timelines. So um, be extra intentional when you do these things. Anyways, back to what I was saying. So the last few days, I felt like something was, um, there was going to be, something was about to finalize, even though nothing is ever final, but something was about to finalize, some answer was going to happen, or some, some, some physical, tangible proof or manifestation was going to take place. And so I, I told my, my best friend Rex, you guys know my best friend Rex, I said to him, I don't know, I, I really miss doing readings, but I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to give it a, a few more days. Um, and yesterday, yesterday I woke up from a dream and Magenta Pixie was in this dream and I'm not a vivid dreamer. I'm a walking dreamer. I'm a, I'm a day, I'm a dream walker, meaning that in my everyday life, I'm constantly in an, I'm constantly astral traveling. I can be in two places at once. I can be walking the dogs or I can be walking whatever. I don't have dogs, but Rex has dogs. Or I can go on a meditative walk. And at the same time, I can mm, teleport into outer space and see myself in outer space or work with different beings like dragons, like fairies, like whatever. So I'm an astral traveler in my waking state. So I think that when I go to bed at night, I'm completely like <laughs> out. I'm, I'm burned out. You know, I, I even need to watch a bit of television before I go to bed at night just to restore. So I think the reason I'm not much of a vivid dreamer is because I do it in my all day long. And then my body needs to repair at night. But the last two nights, Magenta Pixie shown up in my dreams and very vivid dreams, very like, you know, we're buddies, but, and we're like in our sweatpants and she's kind of almost like, I don't want to say initiating me, but there was a clear, clear resonance within the dream that I needed to get in touch with her for whichever reason. And I found Magenta Pixie less than a year ago. Because as you guys know, I, my guides didn't let me listen to anything for six, seven years. And it, it, I had to be self-taught. And self-taught just means that you're connecting to all those YouTube channels or all that information or to the Akashic Records, but you're doing it from within. And there's no right or wrong way if, you know, some people might choose a different trajectory where they are they awaken after listening to videos on YouTube, which is all amazing. 
right? It just happened to be part of my personalized, individualized blueprint. So um, I found Magenta less than a year ago. And the second that I stumbled upon her channel and I heard her speak, everything she was sharing, the message from the Nine, from the White Wing Collective Consciousness of Nine, the way that she brought the information forward, the way that she presented it, which is mastery on her part because you can receive messages all day long. But if you're not cooperating with it, if you're not really decoding it, then you're not really partaking in the expansion of your own consciousness. So, I, you know, she's the master. She's also the student. We are the sorcerers. We are the apprentices. apprentices. It's how it works in life. So I give her immense credit for being able to receive the downloads and then being able to decode the downloads and really examine them and dissect them. And I do the same thing, and I'm sure a lot of you do as well. So when I stumbled upon her channel, I felt an instant, instant, instant connection with Magenta Pixie and the Nine. And I've always, you know, my whole thing with my, my, my career and my spiritual practice has always been to remove judgment because we've been so deeply instilled with shame and guilt and fear and all these things to remove judgment and really take the overview and acknowledge people's experiences because they are valid and everything is true dependent upon which um, vibrational frequency you are vibrating at. So everything is uh, valid. We have to lend validity to every experience people have. And I, I quickly understood that, that love is is truly what we're here to do. And obviously, a discernment is important so we need to um, we need to have the third eye and the heart work in concert with each other it can't just be the heart it can't just be the third eye it has to be a emerge matter antimatter magnetic electric electric magnetic um, you know feminine masculine king queen um, moon sun it has to be emerge and when you merge the two then you're able to really really take the overview and 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 empathize with people without necessarily internalizing it because you understand that when you do that it can be detrimental to your health but coming from that unity consciousness unity where we are all one and that no perspective should ever be criticized because it's valid to the person who's experiencing it so i saw that same there was like that common thread between us and I kept, you know, I kept tuning into her here and there, and I especially loved her interviews and, and, and all of that, and her, her activations are incredibly advanced. Like, she she's someone to truly tune into, honestly, like, <laughs> truly. Like, if you're not tuning into Magenta Pixie, I highly recommend, because even her material from, from even, like, I'm speaking about, like, 10 years ago, her stuff from 10 years ago is still very current, you guys. So make sure you tune into her. She's from another planet, no question. So anyways, um, I kept listening, you know, without without any thought. It was just cool, whatever. Like I, I enjoy speak, like listening to her and, and so on. And last week, you guys saw my video about this other teacher that where that talked about like we become the universe and when we are embodied, we don't hear guides. We don't hear our guides and and and... I agreed with her because she she assumed the role of being the universe, being source, and from that perspective, maybe you don't hear your guides. But I shared a very intimate with video with you guys that um, that I had a, a similar and also a different take on it that you can be embodied and still hear your spirit guides. It's kind of like you can be a chauffeur and drive someone around, but you can also hop in an Uber and, and experience it from a different vantage point. Or you can listen to hip hop, or you can listen to jazz, or you can be silly with your friends and experience a completely different frequency than when you are completely zeroed in and focused. And so I, I shared an intimate video with you guys. And what's interesting is that video connects into this one, because when I shared that video, I didn't under, really understand what was coming, but I think I was priming my vib vibratory field for what was to come, and it came this morning. And I know you guys are probably on the edge of your seat. I know I'm pretty good. <laughs> but hopefully you have your popcorn. So anyways, um, so starting two nights ago, Magenta Pixie showed up in my dreams two nights in a row. And she showed up, and you guys know, I, I never, I, I'm truly in that space of neutrality. I can receive the most genius idea 
in life and I will still not take it on board. I just don't because I'm of the belief that if I'm fully aligned with spirit and I've already experienced this for myself and with myself, if I'm fully aligned with spirit, I don't really need to choose anything. All right. It's going to be chosen for me. And um, so I, I'm, it's very rare that I will ever act on impulse, even if it's an amazing idea. You know, I'm not, I, I've learned, I learned long ago, these, the buzz is great. You can ride it and you can surf it like a wave and enjoy it. But there's usually a crash as well. So obviously, if you have the consciousness to be able to ride the wave and then get off the wave before it crashes, or maybe you want to experience the crash, I don't know. But I, I, it's very seldom that you will ever see me act on impulse. Um, but the last two nights, she's been showing up in my dream. And as I stated before, I'm not I'm not very much of a vivid dreamer. I'm an, I'm an astral traveler in my waking state. I'm a dream walker. And I kept getting this signal from her, like, you need to get in touch with me or, or we're, there's something here where we're part of a group soul consciousness or I don't remember what was said. It was more of the visuals that I remember. I'm very visual. And I, and uh, they were telepathic transmissions in the dream that, that almost didn't need words. It was indescribable. So, Okay, so she showed up in my dream a, a second night consecutively. So yesterday morning, after awakening, after waking up, I I was still kind of like in a half sleep state, but I just followed my light body. I just listened to it as I always do. I didn't go to the gym. I sent Magenta Pixie an email. And I knew that she's probably, you know, she's a busy woman. She does really well and... I knew that and um, I knew that someone else might reach it or, or read it or she would read it if, if it was meant to be. And I contacted her. I didn't give her all the specifics, but I told her that the guides that she channels, they feel like they have the exact same harmonic signature as the guides that I channel. And I always say the guides and then you guys hear me talk about the guides or the angels and I'm all over the place with it. Um, which is totally fine because it's part of it. But I asked for her blessing and I, I told her what happened, that she showed up in a dream. And, you know, I've shown up in a lot of people's dreams. I receive messages on Instagram every day uh, from people who say that I've shown up in their dream. And sometimes it could be that we're part of the same group soul. Uh, and sometimes it could be that your 3D mind interprets it the way it wants to interpret it. Like, I'll give you another example. I'm gay. 100% homosexual in this life. I'm interested in men, but I've received a lot of women uh, messages from women in the past saying, well, I, I don't know. I still believe that we are twin flames and I don't I don't think if you're all about energy, then the, the gender shouldn't matter, which is true. However, we are here to experience something in physical form. We're here to taste. We're here to smell the different aromas. We're here to enjoy life. So do we choose to be gay? Well, I can get into a whole other video about that, but uh, I don't think we choose it from a third dimensional standpoint because everything's already been architected for us. However, we are the, ar the architect, so in a way we choose it because we want to experience something different. So, but that's a whole other topic. If I said that to the gay community, they would probably be livid right now, but they would have to like sit and allow me to elaborate. <laughs> but I love my, my, my people. So um, anyways, uh, so my point is, Magenta Pixie, yesterday I, I missed taking readings. I was like, I even said to Rex, I, I wish I could take a reading today, but some things, there's like a calm right now and I'm just going to enjoy that and I'm going to relish it and sit in that and bask in that. And I did. So this morning I woke up to an email and you guys have 6% left on my laptop. I apologize profusely, but let me get my phone. Okay, so I have like 5% now. It's all good. No rush. We're at 34 minutes. Um, okay, so this morning I woke up to an email from Magenta's, I believe, partner or maybe someone who works with her. I believe it's her partner. Um, and I'm going to read it for you guys. And I asked for Magenta's blessing in the email to, um, to carry her legacy and to carry her name with me everywhere I go. You know, back in the day, there were descendants, there were this, and it's beautiful. I find that beautiful. And it's not in a way where you praise someone, you know, or you, 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 
you uh, praise the, what's that saying? You worship the ground they stand on. It's about respect. It's about an acknowledgement. It's about we are one and I see you and I see what this is and there's something bigger here. Maybe it's that I'm, and I'm just speaking off the top of my head, maybe it's that I'm supposed to, her messages are so advanced that the people who follow me are supposed to go see them because they're that advanced. Uh, there are so many different factors that can tie into this wonderful divine equation. There's so many things. Maybe it's that the the, the white wing collective consciousness of nine isn't done here. Like and 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 when you know when she say that like in fifty years or forty years she goes and people forget about the white winged or I go and people you know whatever. Like there's so many different ways to look at this. The white winged collective consciousness of nine is important. And it's a, it's a very powerful group of beings. And Magenta's messages need to be heard. They really do. And I feel like we might be part of the same um, diamond light soul matrix is what I feel. I feel like we might be part of the same diamond light soul matrix. And I ask for her blessing to be able to channel the white wing collective consciousness of nine as well. I don't channel in, in the sense that I'll be like, you guys know I, I just receive the messages from the guides and then I translate them. I'm a translator. So I received an email this morning and this is the message I got. Hi, Phil. I have passed your email to Magenta. Now bear in mind, I could have messaged her three months ago, four months ago, five months ago. Okay. I have passed her email to Magenta. She thanks you for your contact and for your dedication as a light worker and spiritual teacher at this time. She told me to tell you that she had just heard someone else mention your name minutes before I told her about your email. <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and she is aware of the synchronicity and its meaning. She sends her blessings and good wishes for your future journey as an Ascension Enlightenment teacher on this planet. Wow. So she heard my name minutes before I sent her email. Hi, Phil. I have passed your email to Magenta. She thanks you for your contact and for your dedication as a light worker and spiritual teacher at this time. She told me to tell you that she had just heard someone else mention your name minutes before I told her about your email, and she is aware of the synchronicity and its meaning. She sends her blessings and good wishes for your future journey as an Ascension Enlightenment teacher on this planet. Wow. I don't even know. So today marks a new day for me. And I will be bringing forward the White Wing Collective Consciousness of, no of Nine. The, gui the guides that I always refer to are the Nine. And I honor you, Magenta, and I love you. You know, And some people will meet in this lifetime and some people won't. And that's okay because we're still connected. And that's part my best friend I haven't seen in 10 years, you guys. He lives in Nebraska in the farm. I hear cows behind him when he's talking. But we're, we're soul family. We understand what we're doing here. We understand. It's not about like having spiritual conversations all day long. It's not about that. It's about Magenta has her mission. I have my mission. They are the mission. We, You watching this have your mission. And we're all connected as a beautiful network of light. So... I will leave you with this, and I thank you for watching. Um, I believe there's a bell under this. You guys know I've only been on YouTube five months. There's a bell under this. Please hit subscribe. And um, I love you. And we are the White Wing Collective Consciousness of Nine.